Hey, Alexis Love Beauties and Flawless Men. We are back for part four of Seek Ye First, The Kingdom, and Then. Today, we're going to be reading from Matthew chapter six, verses one through 34, and you're going to get an idea of exactly where that came from. So let's get started on chapter six, verses one. And he says, take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. God is saying you have to take heed. You have to be aware that you are not doing things so other men can be happy for you. So they can praise you like you gave to charity. And now you're boasting about that. You're telling everyone and men are looking at you like, oh man, you know, he, he did see that. God said, take heed, be wise, be aware that you're not doing things to get pretty much glory from other people. That is... You know, that is significant to seeking a first the kingdom. So that way, when you're doing things for God, you will be confident in that. We see in our generation a lot of time people are doing things and they're recording certain things and everything does not need to be displayed. That's exactly what he's saying. You do not have to do things for everyone to see. Some things are done in private and in secret. Take heed that your arms are not being done before men. Otherwise, you don't have a reward with your father in heaven. You get what you're going to get everything that you're going to get here. Therefore, when thou dost thine eyes, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the sonolog and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Like I was saying, some people are purposely do things just because they know Oh my God, people are going to look at this. I'm doing this for like, you know, our generation. We do that a lot. Like seriously, we want, we are looking for views, likes, comments. We're only doing certain things to get honor from other people. And God said, does not do that because you will be like hypocrites. It's going to be fake. You're not doing it for a good cause. You're doing it because if I go ahead and give this homeless man some money and I record it, then I know I can get a million views on social media and this can go viral. Even when people are doing that, that is not to be seen. If you would like to record something or take a picture of something, I say keep that in private. But honestly, just some things are need to be in the moment. And they do not need to be recorded. God said, when you do that, you're doing that as the hypocrites do. He said, does not do not sound the trumpet. You don't have to be loud about that. Hello, hello. Can y'all hear me? Hear me? Can y'all see me out here? I'm giving to the homeless. Hey, how you doing, yo? I just, um, can I get ten on three? Yeah, and you know, uh, did you see me out there? I did just get a homeless man like fifteen dollars. Yo, he said he was gonna go buy some burgers and fries. So you don't have to sound the trumpet. You don't have to sound the trumpet. You don't have to let people know what you're doing for people. A lot of the people, a lot of the time, people always want to do that. Oh, I did this for someone, so I looked out for her. Girl, I got dinner tonight. Oh, as you should. Because you remember all of the other times I paid for dinner? People are not genuine. They're not doing that. God said you don't have to sound the trumpet when you're doing something. You can keep that in private. When you do sound the trumpet when you're doing something, you're getting glory from men. And there's no reward. And the Father is not rewarding you with anything. So everything you get here, that's what you, that's what you deserve. You're getting your rewards already. But when thou doest... Um, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Oh my God. That is, that is, that is just so powerful. Like everything God says is powerful. When you're doing alms, when you're doing good things, do not let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Like I'd be saying, some people are not going to come out and be honest with that. I got our back. I'm going to say it on our behalf because somebody has to say these things. You have to tell the truth and shame the devil. That's why we're here. The more we cover up and we lie and we bear false witness and we do all of these things, the more power that we're giving the enemy, right? I've been a victim to that. You're getting ready to do something or maybe you're already doing something or you're so excited about it to where you want to tell people. God said, does not do that. Do not tell the left hand what the right hand is doing. There is things that need to be 
in secret and covenant in private. God says he keeps his secrets with the righteous and the wicked he does curse. We do not need to tell everybody every single thing. They do not care. I had to come to realize that people do not care. If they do care, it's false. It's just to see what they can get out of it. They're not going to help. If you realize every time you tell somebody something, what you want to do, what you've been doing, what you're planning on doing, the way you see things in the future or however you're hurt and your pain, a lot of the time you never see anyone helping you. They're not checking on you with that concern. Oh my God, are you still sad? Has everything been okay? Oh my God, did you get that bill paid? They do not care. So it makes sense to not tell the left hand what the right hand is doing. You do not have to tell everybody everything. When you seek ye first the kingdom of God, then you will understand that. There, there are things that need to be done and it'll happen at the appointed time. When you give up too much too soon, then you're giving the enemy room to do whatever it is that he would like to do. God says, does not when you're doing things, do not tell the right hand what the left hand is doing. Hey, babe, where you going? I'm about to go out and uh, drop these sandwiches off to the homeless. You got that recorder because I'm probably going to need to borrow that so I can go ahead and post that on Facebook later on. You do not have to tell the left hand what the right hand is doing. That thy eyes may be in secret and thy father, which sees them in secret himself, shall reward thee openly. Another thing why God said earlier in Proverbs, do not be envious of the oppressor, or that's in general. Do not even be envious of the wicked at all either. When you're doing things, this is what people do. People do not tell the left hand what the right hand is doing. They go into secret. They go to the father. They're asking the father. They do not despise what he's telling them to do. They let God lead their paths. And then when you are on the outside looking in and you see someone bust or you see someone with something, the things that they seek, they ask, and then that was added unto them. Now you're looking like, oh my God, like I remember he was this or I remember she was that. And how did they come up or how did this happen? They did what they were supposed to do. They minded their business and stayed at their office. God says when you do that and you go in secret with him, then he will add these things to you. Then when you're in secret afterwards, then God will reward you openly. But see, if you take it upon yourself to be rewarded openly, hey, what's up? I'm giving to the homeless. Then that's how you get that's all you get. But when you're Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus, um, I do only got ten dollars, but you know, I'm riding past this homeless man. I'm at this red light and um I'm gonna give him five. You know, I'm gonna give him five. Even though I do need gas in my car, you know, I know I have it or I will get it again this week. So, you know, Lord, I'm asking for a blessing, but I'm gonna go ahead and give him five of this ten and I'm gonna go on about my way. And then when that week come, even before that week come, here goes somebody calling you. Hey, girl, it was just laid on my heart to give you a thousand dollars. You did something in private. You seek God about that. Lord, I only got 10. I'm about to get five to this homeless man in private, not on Facebook. Y'all only got $10 left in my bank account, but I'm about to get five to this homeless man. Check me in the next status. God says, do not tell anyone what the left hand is doing, do not tell the right hand. Do things in secret, and then God will reward you openly. Oh, and like he said in Proverbs as well, when he rewards you openly, you're safe. Your things are safe. The things that God adds to you are safe. Can't nobody take nothing. Can't nobody do nothing. So he said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid when fear cometh. Don't be afraid. Don't worry about it. You worked hard for that. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the silos and in the corners of the street that they may be seen of them. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. When you pray, now, I know our generation is different and we will get online to pray and we would, I do it, my text somebody something and things like that. God, only God knows your true intentions. 
And if you're being pure in your heart, and if you're really saying, like if somebody make a status and be like, pray for me, and you drop something right there real quick, and it's not that you try, only God know that. Only God know that. We need to be careful when we're doing things out as well. Prayer always is for God. Just flat out, period. Now, it's not to say, well, He said, when you pray, you shouldn't be like the hypocrites. They love praying in the sign laws. They love being seen. Like I said, I feel like, and Lord, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like if someone asks you for prayer and you pray for them and it's coming from a genuine place, all right. But I feel like if somebody, you pray for somebody and you got to go tell five or six people, hey, how you doing? Did you just see that lady that just walked into me in the store and she, I prayed for her? Yeah. God said, do not do that. Prayer should be in secret. We have a different generation now to where, you know, we church might be online and things like that. And people are coming with different information. But like I said, only God knows your heart. If you are praying for people online or you're doing something like that, please be genuine. Because at the end of the day, God knows your heart and he will expose you. If you're just trying to get on the Internet and say this and say that just to be seen, he will expose you. He said, do not be like the hypocrites. They have their reward. The pastors that want to be seen, the first ladies that want to be seen, everybody that's jumping on the internet or jumping somewhere doing something and just praying for somebody because they want to be seen, you have your reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou have shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father, which sits in secret, shall reward thee openly. Again, God is saying when you pray, pray in secret. And then there is times to where you don't have to let somebody, can you pray for me? Yeah, I'm praying for you right now. There, There is times that you can pray about it. I'm not, let me, let me try and get this right. You don't have to pray. Ugh, this all probably sounded crazy. You can pray about it in secret. Like, say somebody walked up to you, like, oh my God, can you pray for me, sister? Like, I just felt like, and you pray for them. I think that's fine. I'm not sure. You ask God about that, because I'm be asking about, about that too, just reading off of this. But then God said he wants you to pray in secret. He wants you to go into your closet and close the door and then pray in secret. You have to meet your father in secret. I think because when you pray, that is personal. You're being vulnerable. There's a lot that's going on. And you cannot do that if it's loud. You can't do that with the door open. You can't do that with people around and all the influences and just all types of things like that. God prefers us to pray to him in secret and close the door. And then again, he said, I will reward you openly. You do not have to let everybody know that you're praying for this, that, okay, I got you. I pray for you. I told God about what your illness was and then this or any of those things. You pray in secret, you could just come back and be like, I have the solution for you. You don't have to say, oh, I got the solution for you because I pray. And yeah, God had told me. That. We have to keep things in secret. God prefers us to pray to him in secret. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions. I'm just going to stop right there because I had to look that up. God said, when you pray, do not use vain repetitions. Vain is dangerous. Vain is, is harmful. You know how we we'll say don't use the Lord's name in vain. It's disrespectful. God said, when you come and talk to him, do not repeat. Do not pray in vain repetition. Lord, forgive this example. I ain't gonna even, Lord, forgive me, because I ain't gonna even put this in, in, I ain't even putting this in the name of the Son. I'm just gonna just try and demonstrate what this means. Do not pray in vain repetition. I don't even really wanna put Lord or nobody before this. We're just gonna just say this, right? Um, and I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. What that means is do not come to God asking Him, I need you to remove the relationship that they're in because, yeah, I've been cheating with him and I need to be his girl. So I need you to move that up out the way. 
And then you keep on asking God that all the time, all the time. Vain repetition. Lord, I need you, uh, excuse me, I need you to remove that relationship. God said, do not come to him basically asking ignorant things. Basically. Vain repetition. Then you send the same thing over and over again. I ain't even want to do no example. I ain't even want to put his, his name stamped in front of that. Just, just an example. Do not ask God anything ignorant and then keep on repeating the same thing over and over and over again. Do not, when you pray, do not pray with vain repetition as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard of their much speaking. You're doing all of this talking to God and it's disrespectful. And you think because you keep on talking and you keep on saying all of these different things that he's hearing you, he said he don't hear you. God is not hearing you. When you ask him ignorant stuff, he, he's not hearing that. He's not hearing that. Be not yea, therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Do not be like the heathens and the hypocrites and the sodologues. God know what you need before you ask him. So do not ask God ignorant things like, okay, I'm in my closet. I need you to remove that girl from that relationship with him because... I don't even think he really loved her for real. And then you keep on saying that. And then he said, he know what you need before you ask him. And what you need is not that girl's man. You need to quit asking God for ignorant stuff. Just flat out. There's no other way to say that. God said, stop asking him ignorant stuff. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our father, okay. He said, now, this is what he wants us to pray. Okay? This is what God wants us to pray. We're right here in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. If you do not know what to pray, this is what God wants us to pray to him. Don't be asking him to remove somebody out of relationship so you can step in because he don't even really like her like that. And he keep on cheating on her. And yeah, I need you to do that ASAP. God said, don't ask him ignorant things. If you if you don't know what you don't know what you need to be praying, he said, This is what you need to pray. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our father. Let me let me back this up. Let me back this up and slow this down. Our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. God said, that's what you pray. He said, that's what you pray. And then he said, you have to forgive you have to forgive. If you do not forgive, then he's not going to forgive you. Period. I'm going to be real with y'all. Forgiving, it may be a task, but it needs to be done. At the end of the day, it has to be done. Because you want God to forgive you. You're giving grace every single day. What people don't understand is a lot of the people, they go off the law in the, the Torah, the beginning of the word. So they feel like, well, they weren't doing that back in the day. We do have a new commandment. The new commandments were with the son. If back in the day they wasn't supposed to love their neighbor as they love themselves or forgive, that, okay. We have new standards. We're supposed to love our neighbor and we're supposed to forgive. And if you do not, then God is not going to forgive you. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. God says, look, when you fast, that is private. 
That is you in your closet. That is you coming to God in a covenant, right? He says, does not, do not have your countenance. We looked that word up in Genesis. Countenance means your face, your emotions. Do not be angry when you're fasting. Do not have this look on your face. You do not have to tell people what you're doing. When you're fasting, you're coming to God pure, period. You do not have to tell everybody what's going on. Oh my God, girl, why you look like that? Like, why you look so sad? Like, I mean, to be real with you, I haven't ate in like 15 days because I've been doing this work for God or whatever. Yeah, I've been fasting. Well, 15 days, yeah. So how that's going? I mean, I'm still here. <laughs> I've been drinking water and stuff. Um, I ain't had no food or nothing like that. He said, don't do all of that. You're doing a good work. Even if you look sad or even if you're really hungry or you're going through something, still be happy. You shouldn't appear to people to be looking like that. Still keep yourself up. No one should know what's going on with you, period. I know sometimes we might tell people or girl, I'm not going to eat today because I'm fasting or something like that. If pe people fast for different reasons, it's not always spiritual, period. People be fasting to lose weight because they about to go to Florida and they need to drop these couple of pounds. But if you're fasting for to be in covenant with God, then that's none of nobody's business. It don't matter what's going on. You have to make sure you keep yourself up. Even if you're losing weight or whatever, the, whatever is going on, God says keep yourself up. You do not want to be like the hypocrites in the sign logs. They're, they're purposely looking hurt. Like It's not a bad thing. You're in communication with God. You shouldn't be looking like that. He says keep yourself up because surely they have their reward already. The people that man. That burger show sure look good. Oh my god, you want a piece? No, nah, I'm fast and I can't have no piece of that. Really? Oh my god, like I don't think a little piece would hurt. And that's what people would do. That's what hypocrites would do. You tell somebody you fast and they're gonna offer you the whole buffet. They paying for everything, they doing all this. God said keep that a secret. Surely they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face. God said, keep yourself clean. Keep yourself clean. You don't have to fast and be dirty and be looking crazy and be looking tired or sad or any of those things. You know what you were doing before you started doing it. You knew you wanted answers. You knew you went in a covenant for something with God. So keep yourself together. He says, wash your face. Get you some beauty rest. Do the norm. Do the norm. You don't have to have people feeling sad for you. Do the norm. He said, anoint your head and wash your face. That thou appear not unto man to fast, but unto the Father which is in secret. You're not appearing to man that you're fasting, that you're going through something. That vulnerable state, only God is seeing that. Fasting is being vulnerable with God. He's the only one that's seeing that. When you still have to go to work tomorrow, when you still have to show up for your family and all of those things, you still need to look clean. You still need to look good. You need to appear to be good because you are good. You're safe. You are fine. You're doing the work of God. Your clothes don't have to be all ripped up. You don't have to be looking crazy just because you're doing something. God said, keep yourself together. And thy father, which is in secret, shall reward you openly. God says, anytime you come to him in secret, he will reward you openly. You do not have to tell the left hand what the right hand is doing. You do not have to be yelling out in the streets what's going on, what you are doing. God says, do these things in secret. Tell him, cast your cares upon him in private and close the door behind you. Keep that in secret and he will reward you openly. When you do things without structure or you're telling everyone everything, then that's already your reward. The 10 people you told something to, God had 10 million for you. But since you wanted to do that, then you already got your reward. Like I said, I know we be wanting to tell people things, and that, but he said, just do not do it. Tell him about it. We have to seek it first and then we will understand that they don't even, they don't even care. It's not for them to care. Like I said, if you're doing something like say you're a person that does charity work, that's fine. Okay. 
But there, but God knows your heart at the end of the day. Like I said, we are in a different time, and I understand we do do things out in public in general, and we try and get support from people on all of these things. But God knows your heart. If you're out there singing and crying and praying and doing all of these things just for clout, then you already got your reward. If you you do something with charity or something like that in public, and then you're coming in privately, like Lord, you know we had a great event today, and you're not God knows your heart, and He's going to reward you openly. Now that one charity is going to turn to another one and another one and another one. You weren't just doing a charity just to get the to get any city board reward. You were doing it out the kindness of your heart. So now God gave you another charity. He blessed you with another charity. God knows your heart. It's better to don't be shady. Just don't do it. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. God is saying do not lay up treasure on earth where rust, moth, all of those things corrupt. This is the importance of seeking yea first. You have all of these cars and none of them are going with you. You have all of these houses and none of them are going with you. These things rust. These things break down. These things can be stolen. These things can be destroyed if you're around around people and they got an attitude and now they're just breaking everything you worked hard for. God said you shouldn't be focused on laying up your treasure here. And this is why he says, come to me in private and I will reward you openly. And like he said in Proverbs, you will be safe and you will enjoy your things. Do not be afraid. You have to, let me back up, let me see. He said, don't lay up for yourself treasure here. God blesses people. You know, sometimes I think people don't really want to mess with God or really want to know him like that. Because it always sounds like God just wants you to be broke. Like you can't have nothing. You can't live a good life. You just put. That is not how you're supposed to live. Okay. When you come to God, that's not how you're supposed to live. That's not how it's going to be. He wants you to seek him and consult with him. So you can be wise and understand how to keep these things. So you can know that when you get these things, these things do not change you. They do not make you a different person or anything like that. God does not want us to live in poverty. That's a curse. That's a, it's, it's a curse. Just straight up. He living good. He wants us to live good. Thy will be done in heaven as it, in earth as it is in heaven. God has a good will. They're living good in the spirit realm. He wants us to live good as well. He wants us to seek him first. He wants us to not focus on like we do because we've been accustomed to living like that. But we have to slow down and begin to speak to him. He wants us to lay up good treasure in heaven. He says, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. When God gives you something, he's going to make sure that it's safe. He said, do not be afraid. When you don't ask him, there is no covering. So you've been trying to lay up all this good treasure here. You don't have any record that you was even in earth. In heaven, because you never even consulted with him. God doesn't know your voice. He has not heard from you. See, when you came from heaven, you came pure. You were down here at earth. You got introduced to things. You was raised in the hood. You went through some things. But you never called out. You never cried out. You never communicated with God or anything. And you just laid up all this treasure here. And you don't have, there's no, there's no nothing in heaven. The goal is, yes, to live good, but you want to live good by the will of God. Do not lay up good treasure here because those things can be stolen, broken, rusted. You know how you will walk past somebody and don't step on my shoes. If you step on, you step on somebody, Jay's, they'll take you out. They done laid up good. That's a prime example. People like that, you know, they done laid up so much good treasure in earth that you can't even walk past them the wrong way. You step on their shoes. They are superstitious. You got to get the brooms, spit on a broom, sweep your feet, or do all of that stuff because they done laid up so much good treasure. He don't even got no treasure in heaven. 
You ain't never even asked God, Lord, I just want to make sure that I got some good shoes to walk around in heaven. You just making sure you're walking good down here. God said, don't do that. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break in, do where... Where thieves do not break through nor steal. God said, when you go into your secret closet and you lay up treasure with him, he, he'll reward you openly. And that's what he mean. He said, seek him first and then he'll reward you openly. You don't have to worry about things being stolen or none of that. But he said, lay up a first. You need to lay up good treasure in heaven. That's what you need to do. Lay up good treasure in heaven because can't nobody steal from God. Can't nobody break in heaven and steal nothing. That's, that's what I got y'all. He said what he said. Lay up the good treasure in heaven when you go in secret. When he rewards you openly, you'll be safe. With the things that he added to you, can't nobody break in and steal nothing. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. You'll see how much people love People will put materialistic things before you. That is where their heart is. You see where their heart is. I don't really got nothing else to say. You done been around people that, uh, yeah, they had nice things. You want to take care of your nice things, but they will put, they'll mess you up. They'll be ready to throw hands about their things. They'll put things before you. They'll put things before you. God said, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. You don't have no relationship with him. You don't know who he is. You never ask no questions. You're not trying to seek nothing. Everything is fake. YOLO, you turn up, you get one life. Ain't nobody about to be sober. Ain't nobody about to attempt to do nothing. We're just going to be out here turning up until we leave this earth. And then we're going to go live on Mars. That's where your heart is. You somebody that's like, okay, Lord, I don't even know how to do this. But, you know, I've been hearing about you. Or maybe I haven't heard about you, but I'm, I'm just interested. So I'm about to go in this closet and I'm about to pray and I'm about to talk to you. Lay up good treasure in heaven. And this is why God always said, you'll be able to tell somebody about their fruit. You'll be able to tell where somebody's heart is by the treasure that they laid up. Period. For where the treasure is, that's where the heart is also. Somebody only treasure their they house, their cars. Not saying that you don't post to make sure your things are good or whatever. But you that's where your treasure is. That's where your heart is. Can't nobody get in your car unless they got on a, a brand new outfit. Girl, didn't, didn't you have all last year? Oh, no, honey. No, I just got these things detailed. I'll be right back. Let me go get you something new from the store. That's where their heart is. Their, tra their, their heart is in that. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body should be full of light. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I got some acting to do. Um... The light of the body is the eyes. I really don't even know how to explain that. He said the light of the body is the eyes. The light of the body is the eyes. Like you see my eyes, you see my body, that's the light. That's the light. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Your whole body should be full of light if your eye be single. You're not worrying about anything else that's going on. You're not worrying about what somebody else has, what they're doing, how they're yelling out in the streets trying to be seen. You're in covenant with God. You're focusing on your relationship with him. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If you're, if you have an evil eye, okay, if you have an eye that is just to see bad, to do bad, then your whole body is full of darkness. If you have an eye that is full of light, thank you, Lord. If you have an eye that is full of light, then you see light. You do things. You do good things. The hypocrites and the heathens, they have an eye that's full of darkness. So their whole body is dark. There's nothing good about them. You can see them from a mile away like, oh my gosh, she looked like a liar. Yep. If you have a good eye, your eye is full of light, you'll be like, oh my God, she's a sweetheart. You either have a good eye that's full of light or you either have a bad eye that's full of darkness. 
And in this generation, let's not be screwed because we can see people with eyes and we can think that they're good and that could be full of darkness. People can look you in your eyes, your light eyes, and with their dark eyes, they can still try and lie and manipulate you. Seek ye first. Seek ye first. Be careful with the light. If therefore the light that is and thee be darkness how great is the darkness if there is a light in a dark person how great is that light there is no light there is no light if someone is evil they're evil if someone is full of darkness they're full of darkness there is no good like sometimes you still be trying to help and no i'm just gonna give one more chance now ain't no more chances darkness is darkness period if you don't know and you find out, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Person, place, thing, object, merchandise. If it's dark, it's dark. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold onto the one and despise the other. You cannot serve two masters. God is saying you're either going to love him or you're either going to love the devil. You're either going to love the silver and gold. Or you're either going to love the wisdom and understanding. You're either going to love God and hate the devil. Or you're going to hate the devil and love God. Period. You cannot serve two masters. The danger in, in not seeking God first. And seeking the kingdom first is just that. You'll begin to love the things that God has added unto you, but you don't love the person that created all things, where it came from. That's the danger in that. Yea, cannot serve God and mammoth. You cannot serve God and the devil. You cannot serve God and stones. You cannot love God and love money, for an example. Like I said, God, and like he said, God knows what we need, but we have to be wise. The only way to be wise and understand that, yeah, you need money to take care of yourself, but you have to be, you have to ask for wisdom and understanding so that money is not becoming your God because you cannot serve two masters. God know we need money in this generation, but you'll mess around and get the money first. And then you just mess everything up because you don't have no wisdom and understanding of how it's supposed to go. You don't. You haven't allowed God to direct your path with the money. You're just out here. That's why I said write the vision and make it plain. When you do that, you're going to need assistance. God, God is the heavenly assistance. He's the financial advisor. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve two gods. You're either going to love one and hate the other. God says seek ye first. So you can know what you're doing. So you can know what's going on. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body. What ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. God is saying, for this cause, of you trusting him and you loving him and you being the secret with him. You will not be worrying about what you'll eat for tomorrow, what you're going to put on. You are more valuable than any other thing out here. That's what he's saying. The body is more valuable than the clothes and what you have on. That's what the hypocrites do. They want you to see, that's what people do that just lay up good treasure here. They want you to see the new clothes and the nice clothes, but you don't see all of the wounds on the body because they're covering that up. They're covering up the darkness. So all you see is the sunglasses. You just see a nice looking young man. You just see a nice looking young lady, but you don't see the darkness. God said the body is more important than the meat, than the drink. We shouldn't be worrying about what we should eat and drink tomorrow because we have faith in God that we're going to be eating and drinking tomorrow. We be worrying about the wrong things. So then we get caught up and we begin to lay up this bad treasure here on earth. 
because oh my god i have to go do all of these things so i can make sure that my family is eating you give your family to god you cast your cares to god your family is going to be eating The body is more precious than anything, period. Ask for wisdom and understanding. God know we need clothes to cover up ourselves. The clothes shouldn't make you who you are. That's what's going on in this generation. The clothes, the cars, the money, the fame, all of those things are making people who they are. And God is saying your body is more precious than the raiment. It's better than that. You're better than that. But see, we don't have no wisdom, so we just feel like, no, nah, I can't, uh-uh. If I ain't got this to be new, then no. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. And aren't they much, and, I'm sorry, are they not much better than they? God is saying these birds out here that's eating every single day. They don't give nothing. They don't do anything. They're not gathering up, trying to figure out stuff. They're living free as we should. We should be living free. We shouldn't be worrying about what we're eating and the clothes that we're putting on and none of, the, none of these things because we are more precious than birds. We were made in nature. So we shouldn't be worrying about anything. And those are the things of this world. We worry so much about things because we live here and we know, well, if I don't pay my bills, I'm not going to have nowhere to stay. God said, do not worry about anything. We start to worry about things. We start to be anxious. So now we start to do anything strange for a little piece of change just to take care of ourselves. He said, do not worry about anything. The birds eat every single day. He made us before he made us. We have dominion over the birds. So you're going to be taken care of. The moment somebody started doing something different, they get afraid because, oh my God, no, I'm like, no, like, I'm not going to be safe. I'm not going to be taken care of. God is going to take care of you. He said, do not be afraid. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? When we continue to try and think about this and try and figure things out for ourselves, we cannot add anything by doing that. We become overwhelmed depressed and all of these other things because we're just trying to figure it out ourselves we already have help we already have help go into your closet and let god know what you need let god know the things that hurt you let god know every single thing what is going on and then you'll be fine you can't add anything by just keep just just worrying that's you're causing more problems to yourself. God said, just talk to him. You don't have to even be going through all of this. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. Now they grow. They toil you not, neither do they spin. He said, you thinking about clothes. You shouldn't even be taking no thought for no clothes. It's flowers outside. They don't spoil. They don't go through nothing. They still get rain. They still get everything. We worry too much. We were made outside. We should be just like that. Even though we live in houses and stuff like that now, we should still be like that mentally. Like, I'm not worried about nothing. God is going to take care of you just like he take care of everything else. He never changed. He never will. But we got so much fear because we haven't asked God for nothing. So we don't know where it's coming from. We don't know where the next meal is coming from. We don't know where the next this or that is coming from because we do not communicate with him. So we're scared. Oh my God, I feel like I got to do this because I don't know how these bills going to get paid. We don't know where nothing is coming from because we don't speak to him. You speak to him, he's going to tell you everything and then you're going to be at peace. You're going to be like, I ain't worried about that. God is going to take care of that. But you don't know God. You don't want to know him. You're not asking him anything. Just like he don't know you. So you don't know where things come from and you're afraid. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, all his glory, was not arrayed like one of them. He said even Solomon and all his glory, he was not he was not arrayed like one of them. We'll we'll figure something. We'll go back and read later because I'm not really sure of Solomon his story, but God said he wasn't arrayed like them. 
So Lord, forgive me, but it just sounded like Solomon and all of his glory, he wasn't worrying about stuff like that, like clothes and things like that. And like I said, we'll touch upon that later because I'm not sure, I'm not 100% familiar with Solomon. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Oh, yea, of little faith. He's saying you don't have any faith. If tomorrow, you know, when you go outside right now, you know, the grass still out there, right? You know, the snow still out there. You know, the flowers still out there. He's saying we don't even have faith. We don't have faith. If he still got, if it's, if the world is still going on in general, then we should not be afraid of anything. We're going to be taken care of. That's what he's saying. He said, I won't got no faith. Basically, we don't have faith. When everything is still been taken care of outside, why do we feel like we're not going to be taken care of on the inside? We feel like that because we're not communicating with him. We don't know anything because we're not asking for wisdom and understanding. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or where with hell shall we be clothed? God said, do not worry about what you'll be eating. Do not worry about what you'll be drinking. Do not worry about how much the next check going to be. Do not worry about things that's going to happen in the, in the summertime. He said, do not worry about those things. Do not worry about how you'll be clothed. Don't worry about those things. You have to have faith. For all of these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you need need of these things. He said, come and talk to me. I know you need need of these things, but come and talk to me and tell me this. He said, that's what the Gentiles do. That's what the Gentiles do. They just out here worrying. They just out here laying up good treasure, making sure they're taken care of here. But the inner man, but the soul is not taken care of. They don't even have nowhere to go at the end of the day. People be saying, like, I don't even care about, like, I'm just here for right now. You have a laid up good treasure in heaven. When we leave here, we're still gonna be we're still gonna be alive. You you don't have anywhere for your soul to go. Cause you laid up all the treasure here just for the body for right now. God said that's what the Gentiles do. They worry about what's going on, what they're gonna eat, what they're gonna, oh my God, this and that. God said, don't worry about that. But Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things should be added unto you. The reason why God wants us to seek him first is because these things will be added to you. He's going to make sure you're eating. He's going to make sure you're drinking. He's going to make sure you're at peace. He's going to make sure your gifts are safe. He's going to make sure you have a sweet sleep. He's going to make sure that you're loved. God is going to make sure that you're clothed. He's going to make sure that you're protected when you go out. He's going to make sure that your finances are good. Your family is good. God is going to make sure of every single thing that you fret about because he already know what you need. If you need anything, you are to seek him first. God, I need some money. Seek him first. Anybody can get some money. Seek him first. So he can show you and tell you and direct your paths. God says, seek him first and these things will be added unto you. The Gentiles, the heathens, the hypocrites, they're not asking him nothing. So instead of going about this, the... The... What do you say in Proverbs? Instead of going about this, the just having a smooth path, you going through all of these other things that's unnecessary because you didn't ever even ask him. He says, seek yea first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. You don't have anything to worry about. You have to have faith. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Significant unto the day is the evil thereof. 
God said, do not worry about what's going on tomorrow. Don't plan for tomorrow. Don't set up the clothes for tomorrow. Don't get the dinner ready and prep for tomorrow. Do not think about tomorrow. Tomorrow has its own significant amounts of evil. He said, when you seek him first, you're going to be prepared for tomorrow. You're going to be prepared for tomorrow. In conclusion, we have ended our four part series of Seek Ye First, the Kingdom of God. The whole point of this message is, is to ask God about everything. Yes, he knows what you need, but he wants you to ask him for wisdom and understanding so you can know how to get and how to keep these things. He does not want you to be afraid when you see fear coming. You will have a sweet sleep. He will direct your paths. You will not have anything to worry about. God said, do not be envious of the oppressor. Mind your business. Come into your secret place. You don't have to tell the left hand what the right hand is doing. Seek ye first the kingdom. And then life will be in your right hand. Riches and honor will be in your left hand. You will have peace. You will have protection. You will be safe with the things that God adds unto you. You're laying up good treasure with him. Nobody can come and steal, kill, and destroy anything that he gives you. Do not worry about anything. That is what God is saying. We worry because he is nowhere in our lives. So we have no choice. We're scared of everything. God has given us a prayer to pray in Matthew that is what he wants us to pray. You do not have to tell people your every move, what you're doing. They don't care. And if they care, they only care for a benefit out of that. Speak to God about everything. It doesn't matter what it is. I don't know what I'm going to eat for dinner tonight. Lord, do you think I should have beans and rice? Maybe God wants you to have steak and lobster. God wants you to ask him everything because that is what you do in a relationship. I'm going to be real. This is why we're so unsuccessful in relationships. Because instead of asking God, we're asking people. David did the same thing. He looked to his right hand and he couldn't find nobody to do nothing. Now you've been stripped of everything. You're all by yourself. God said, ask me first. Then I'm going to tell you if this someone you should be around. I'm going to tell you if this is the next move you should make. And then you won't have to worry about anything. Unless it's love, beauties, and flawless men. Let's stop worrying about everything. Let's not worry about and focus on the clothes and the money and the love and all of these things. To be real, we have so much more work to do. There's a lot of pain in our heart, a lot of pain in our mind. We have been going through so much things. And if you continue to just cover up that pain with the nice clothes, then you're only laying up treasure here. You're not saving your soul. That is the most important thing in life. You hear, you hear your president say, you hearing people saying it all the time. Your soul, your soul, your soul. Stop thinking that it's fake. Stop thinking that you're only a human. You're, you are a spiritual being. And if you mess up, we all mess up. Let me back up. Because God said all sins are forgiven. We all fall short of the glory of God every single day. You have to understand this man is perfect, okay? But God said he gives us grace. With the grace that we're given, do not take the grace for granted. Well, I know he cheating or I know he a demon or whatever. Or I know he a killer. Or I know all of this, but you know what? I'm probably break up with him next year. Break up with him now. Well, you know what she did? She don't mean no break up with her now. Stop giving people the benefit of the doubt when God is giving you grace. If he's telling you to leave, you got to leave. It doesn't matter what it is. If you feel like, man, I, I've been supposed to leave this job. Leave that job. Don't worry about, man, well, how I'm going to pay these bills. We be so worried about things because we come so accustomed. We shouldn't be worried about things. Yeah, it might be easier said than done, but get into your secret closet and it's going to be um, easier done than said. God is going to take care of us. He's the same God. He's the same God of generations before us, the generation of Abraham, Moses. Every time you read, you see none of God people fail. And you ain't never seen none of God people give up neither. You see them all go out with the fight. Everybody is fighting period 
at the end of the day, seek your first the kingdom. If you do not know how to do something, you don't know how to walk away from toxic anything, you don't know where to start, you don't know why you're here, your purpose, and whatever it may be, this is why you talk to God. I can give you so much. The internet can give you so much. The pastor can give you so much. The counselor can give you so much. The girlfriend, the boyfriend, the husband, the wife, you still have to have your own relationship with God. And what we fail at is, is because we're seeking all of these other things. And we're, we don't have that with God. We don't have a relationship with him. So now we're, we're still limited. God is going to send people and he's going to tell people to tell you and do things and all of that. You have to have a relationship with him first. Alexis Love Beauties and Flawless Men. Watch part one, two, three, and four of Seek Ye First the Kingdom. I encourage you to read. I encourage you to read. Do not be discouraged if you don't know how to pronounce, if you do not understand. Ask God for wisdom and understanding, and I promise you he's going to grant you that. This is private. This is secret. And I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just letting you know, like, it's secret. Don't nobody have to know you was watching this video. Don't nobody have to know that you was reading or doing any of that. They don't have to know. They're in private. I'm doing it. I'm letting you know because I'm introducing you. Like, this is a God I serve. I want y'all to say what's up. And like I said, at the end of the day, God knows my heart as well. Period. Everything you do, do it in private. You do not have to tell people anything. God will reward you openly. People are doing things just because they want to be seen. Let them be seen. And don't be jealous of them neither because they get clout. Let them be seen. Let them turn up. You, you go in private and let God reward you when it is time. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and then his righteousness. That's what some people are missing, the righteousness. And all of these things will be added unto you. Go in private and lay up the good treasure in heaven for your soul. And God is going to bless you openly. And there's nothing, nobody, can't nobody do nothing about that. They can't do nothing about that. And we heard David say he's going to remove his feet from them. They're not going to be able to, at the end of the day, when God has his hand on you and God gives you stuff, there's nothing that nobody can do about that. And when they try and do all of this and do all that, it's nothing but the spirits running within them. It's nothing but the devil. They got to worry about God. Don't you worry about that. God said vengeance is his. We seen that too. Don't worry about it. When they keep trying and trying and coming against you, don't worry about it. God said you're going to have a sweet sleep in a time of trouble. And don't be scared. Don't be scared. And he also said, forgive your enemies. He also said, forgive them so you can be forgiven. So yeah, they did you wrong, but forgive them. Tell God about it and go forth. Alexis loves you.